Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Scavenger. Welcome back to another episode of Project Atmosphere. When I started this game, I, uh, you know, I wasn't really that into it because the writing was just so bad. And really, that's it. Really, that, I, I think that is really what was kind of drawing me away from it. But I, I've played like three episodes of this game now. I've done three videos, and I'm kind of starting to get into it. The writing is comedic. It's just, it, it keeps me entertained because it's just so bad. But also, I think there is a story behind all that bad writing. And I can see where the game is going, and it's got me a little curious. Okay, so we're going to do another video here of this game. And I think, I, I think it can only get better or get closer to what I'm hoping this game will be. So... Let's go ahead and just jump into the episode today. Here he is, in bed. He never uses his sheets. Those are just for looks. He only covers his feet up because he doesn't want the monster under his bed to grab him. And everybody knows that if your feet are covered, you're invincible. That's what I'm assuming. Or he just wants you to see the bulge in his underwear. I don't know. Anyway, here we go. Here we go. Let's get into it. Finally, our plan is making progress. Just finished writing the lyrics. I read it, and it's really good. Now she needs music. Maybe I could try to write it myself. Hmm? It doesn't seem very complicated if you know the lyrics. Yeah, that's how, that's how music works. If you know the words, writing the music to it is really freaking easy, right? Dan... Stick to your neuroscience and all that other nerdy stuff. I have to make a quick decision because Jessie is going to spend her savings on music only to fulfill my dream. Hold on. I thought music was her dream. I have some, I have some questions now. Dan is confusing me. I thought music was her dream and his dream is to build like an artificial intelligence. I thought that was the way this thing was going to go out. So what the hell is Dan talking about now? All right, it's daytime again. I think we're on day four. Yeah, day four. We have $220 in cash. And I don't have a whole lot. Why would I go back to the bathroom? Why is that always an option? No. I'm just going to go straight to work today. Stop giving me that option every morning. That's weird. Holy moly. I want to work. Let me work. I have to click on her to work. Yay, hello. And I'm working. Yep. It looks like it's really not difficult. Is that all? Every time I work, this is what happens. I just sit down on the computer. I help, you know, do the website for whatever I'm doing. And it's over. That's it. Work is done. I can still go back to the house. Uh, go to Miranda's store. Meet with her. Okay, that's something new, right? Where is the store? What? The store street. Is it the store is on store street? That's pretty convenient. Oh, hello. What's up, Miranda? How are you? Good afternoon. Afternoon. What can I do for you? Oh, this is my first visit at your store. You just opened up? Yeah, you're right. I opened a store about a week ago. Well, then let's meet. My name is Dan. Nice to meet you. I am Miranda. Hold on. I have another I have another question. I had an objective to go to Miranda's store. I already knew her name, but now I'm meeting her for the first time. Why am I going to this store? What was the point? What's going on here? Was it to get those doggy biscuits? Because I don't have a dog. Just food for thought. Food for thought. Let's keep going. Well, I'm glad to meet you. Oh, my daughter and I just moved to this town. Everything in my shop is always the most fresh and delicious. Two completely different subject matters, but we'll put it all in one freaking, you know, thought there. And I always have delicacies. Something other stores don't have. If you need anything, just come to me. I will find it for you. Well, thank you. I think I get it. I'll bear that in mind. Uh, 
think we're talking about something illegal. Yes, she is. That's what I was thinking, too. I wasn't going to say anything, but uh, since Dan said it, I think her delicacies are maybe like edibles or maybe even less legal than that. Like maybe she just straight up deals dope. I don't know. She's probably the, the local drug dealer, like the, that, that lady in, in that TV show Weeds, where the mom just starts selling drugs. I don't know. Could be. What else can I do for you? Well, you know what? Tell me about your daughter, because, because, I have no reason for 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 that. I don't have. There's no reason for me to ask about your daughter. But since you mentioned her, I'll start being creepy. Oh, my daughter. I love her very much. Well, I'm sure you do, lady. That's not what I was asking. Thank you. Thank you for that piece of information. Her name is Betty. She works at her pharmacy next door. Oh, haha, you've got a real business family here, huh? Yeah, that's for sure. My husband's been baking bread all his life. And I was selling. Yeah, you were. What now? Has the demand for fresh baked goods fallen? Oh no, we lost him a year ago. He died. Heart oh, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, shoot. I shouldn't have gotten into those questions. Oh no, I've been through this. It's okay. Betty had a hard time dealing with his death. It all happened so suddenly, he never complained. So, we were completely unprepared for it. They had a special bond. He very loved her. They spent a lot of time together. Betty knew it. She couldn't get over it for a long time. I think it's gonna work out. She's gonna be okay. You don't have to worry about that. Of course. I don't doubt it. But how can I not worry about her? Her pain is three times stronger than mine. Weird. Three times stronger than yours. Has this been tested? You got a pain scale? Like an actual pain scale? Uh, she's at her pharmacy now? Of course I do. Hold on. Dan asked, is she in her pharmacy now, in his own words? Her answer is, of course I do. Okay, we're going to go with it. Of course I do. Of course I do. She's a workaholic from morning to night and no weekend. Sorry, guy. You didn't proofread this at all before you just threw it up here, did you? One of the earliest things you learn about writing is to proofread. You write a rough draft. How many, how many rough drafts do you write? You write more than one rough draft. Like you write your rough draft. You do your outline first, right? And then you write your rough draft. And then you write your second draft. And a final draft. There's a lot of drafts. It's, it's getting a bit nipply in here with all the drafts that are going on. I mean, it, it, if you wrote it enough times, maybe you would have seen how hilarious this is. I'm getting way, way off track here. Let's get back to the game. I'm assuming Dan's going to go uh, say hi to Betty over in the pharmacy. Let's go to Store Street. We're on Store Street here, and we're going to the pharmacy. And there is Miranda. Or not Miranda. That that is Betty. Um, at first glance, for some reason, Wednesday Adams popped into my head. Okay, I go to talk to her, and then she jumps behind the desk and starts typing away at her computer, like furiously. Uh, entering the pharmacy, Dad saw a small and fragile girl. Long brown hair, beautifully assembled and 
two merry ponytails. Hi, what can I do for you? I just came to meet you. That's all. Uh, good day, Betty. I'm Dan. Well, very nice to meet you, Dan. Have we met before? No, we haven't met. That's why I'm here. Because I just go around meeting random people for absolutely no reason. Oh, let me ask you. How do you know my name? I don't wear a badge. Yeah, you give him that scowl of disapproval. Oh, let this be my little secret for now. That is weird. You don't just go... You, you don't just go into a store and say, Hey, uh... Hey, Betty, and then and then uh, when she asks how you know her name, she's you're like, hey, hey, I've got my secrets. No, that's how you get a restraining order, I think. Haha, <laughs> wouldn't you like to know? Oh, I can't stand the mystery. And what brings you to my pharmacy? Do you need medication? He probably does. He seems a bit nuts. Oh no, <laughs> thank you, I'm well. Oh, that's great news. You opened a pharmacy here the other day, so I'm stopping by to meet you. Okay, that's actually not a bad excuse to come in. That is okay. I just saw the pharmacy popped up, wanna see what's going on? How you doing? I live around here. Okay. Well, let's just say we've met. I've got a lot to do, and I don't have a lot of time to waste talking. If that's all, I'd like to keep working. Okay, she is a workaholic. She probably just tried to keep her mind off her dad. Have you fixed your computer yet? Wait, I think I get it. You know my mom, right? She told you about me and the computer problem. Yep, you are right. So, do you still need help? Yeah, I think I still need some help. Well, will you let me see that computer? Well, look at that. The computer is as good as new. Oh, you are my savior. Betty was so happy. Because an entire mountain called Computer fell from her fragile shoulders. She was anxious to somehow repay her savior. Anyway, she liked him a lot. She got a little closer. The first thing she thought of was to ask if she should pay something. How much should I pay for the repairs? You don't owe me anything. I just came to introduce myself and to help. Giving up money made Betty even more embarrassed. She stood so close, Dan could see every detail. Face, figure, hair. Oh, ba oh look, she's making duck face. All of a sudden, Betty takes a step forward and puts her wet, shiny lips in a bow and reaches for it. Oh, I think she wants to kiss me. She's standing so close to me and I could clearly feel the heat coming from her body. And I smell. Clean and fresh. Shampoo, soap, all together? Not a drop of perfume. It's like she takes showers or something. Alright, let's go. Should I kiss her in the mouth? Dan was confused by what was happening, so he decided not to rush the already fast-moving events. He gallantly laid out his cheek and smiled. Betty kissed him timidly, barely touching her cheek. I think that's the best thank you ever. I'm sorry, I just felt like doing it for some reason. Thank you so much for helping with computer. If you need anything, medicine or anything, I'll be happy to help. Well, thank you. I'll bear that in mind. I have to go. I'll see you then. Yeah. Bye. Can I do anything else for you? No. No. I guess I should get going. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, not a whole lot happened, but definitely, uh, we, you know, something happened. You know, I met a couple new people, new characters in the story. And we're not really any closer to, to uh, you know... Our cool AI robot thing that I think uh, Dan is going to build. But hey, we're getting there. We're getting there. A anyway, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you smack that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, I'll see you later, guys. Bye-bye.